Okay, so we have the section A and the first question of section A is solve the quadratic equation <clears throat> x square plus 2 root 2 x minus 6 equal to 0 for x. Okay, so the equation is given and we have a Sridharachar formula that can be written as x equal to minus b plus minus under root b square minus 4ac upon 2a. That is the Sridharachar formula. Let us identify our a, b and c value. a will be the coefficient of x square that is going to be 1. B will be the coefficient of X. For this equation, it is 2 root 2. C is nothing but the constant term. That is, for this case, is minus 6. So, let us use A, B and C value in our Sridharachara formula. And let us put the values. X equal to minus 2 root 2 plus minus under root B square. That is, 2 root 2 whole square minus 4 ac minus 4 into a value is 1 into c value is minus 6 upon 2a that is 2 into a value is 1 so let us solve this further this is coming out to be minus 2 root 2 plus minus under root 2 root 2 square is going to be 8 8 minus 4 6 to 24 and plus so it has to be 8 plus 24 divided by 2 so if we further solve this this comes out to be x equal to minus 2 root 2 plus minus 4 root 2 because that is going to be 32 root 32 and root 32 is nothing but plus minus 4 root 2 over 2 in the uh, denominator. Then x comes out to be finally minus 2 plus minus 2 root 2. Okay, so we can take x as two values of x as one is minus 2 plus 2 root 2 and the other one can be taken as minus 2 minus 2 root 2. These are the two values that can be taken. So if we use this and then it going to be if you add them together, then the first value of X is nothing but if you take the two common, the X value, the first X value is coming out to be root two and the next value of X is coming out to be minus of three root two. So these are the two values of X and the solution of X as well. Now, the question says which term of the AP minus 11 by 2 minus 3 minus 1 by 2 is 49 by 2. Okay, this is the first uh, part of the question number 2. A which term is minus 49 is 49 by 2. So we can easily see the, if in this AP the first term is A and it is given as minus 11 by 2. Then we can say the difference, the D, the common difference is we need to subtract that minus 3 minus minus 11 by 2. This is how we find out the common difference. Second term minus the first term and D comes out to be 5 by 2. Okay, so D is the common difference. A is the first term. We are supposed to find out that uh, 49 by 2 is which term. So let us say n -th term n -th term is 49 by 2 or it is a, uh, it is a designated as Tn. So let the n -th term is 49 by 2. What is the formula for n -th term for AP? It is going to be A plus n minus 1 D it has to be 49 by 2. So we have our a value minus 11 by 2 plus n is unknown minus 1 d time d is 5 by 2 is equal to 49 by 2. So we can take 2 and get, get cut it from both the sides. So it remains minus 11 plus 5n minus 5 is equal to 49. If you solve this further, minus 11 goes on the other side makes it 60 49 plus 7 is 60 and then this 5 goes on the other side in plus it becomes 65 so if you solve this further then we can easily find out that uh, let us solve this and it is becoming like minus 11 by 2 plus n minus 1 by 2 5 by 2 is equal to 49 by 2 and then we solved it to be this so ultimately what is coming here is n minus 1 is equal to 60 by 5 that is going to be 12 so if you solve this for n it comes out to be 13 finally so the 49 by 2 is nothing but the 13 term of this ap let us have the b part now okay what says in the b part is asked find a and b so that the numbers a 7 b 23 are in ap okay so since a 7 b 23 are in ap so that their common difference should be equal so but how we can write this as we can write that the difference of first term difference of second term minus first term should be equal to difference of second term minus third term minus the second sum so that's what has been done 7 minus a is equal to b minus 7 
Okay, so if you solve this further, this gives you a plus b is equal to 14. It gives you a plus b is equal to 14. That can be take, taken as a first equation. One more thing, we can apply the same logic on the other side as well. So we can write like we can write like this that 23 minus b is also equal to b minus 7. The difference is common. If you solve this, 2b is coming out to be 30. So b value is coming out to be directly 15. Okay, we can use this b's value in the first equation. So we can write down a plus 15 is equal to 14. So obviously a comes out to be minus 1. Okay, a comes out to be minus 1 and b already we calculated in the earlier step that is 15. So these are the two values of a and b. Next. Now what he's saying a solid piece of metal in the form of a cuboid of dimension 11 centimeter. Okay, but uh, see the this particular uh, question is not not more uh, not anymore in the in the syllabus in the present syllabus. So we can leave the solution of this. This is not not anymore in the present syllabus. So we are uh, we can easily uh, remove this uh, particular question and we can go to the next one. What is there in the next one? Now the, the, there are two fi two figures particularly given. Let us have the first one. He's saying in figure one, AB is the diameter of a circle centered at O. Okay, BC is tangent to the circle B as it is visible. BC is tangent. This is the BC tangent to the circle uh, available at B and OP bisects the chord AD. There is an OP there which bisects the chord AD. The chord AD belongs to the circle and angle OP created. That is A and the center and the P part has been uh, extended with the angle of 60 degree. Then find the angle of C. We need to, we need to find out the angle c okay so let us do it once again so this is the figure given we can easily see everything is just mentioned over there we don't need to mention anything else in that now since we can say this op line bisects the chord ad okay we can easily say that op line bisects the chord ad okay because he has mentioned here op bisects the chord e, uh, the chord ad so obviously your ap is equal to pd okay because he has already mentioned so ap is equal to pd and angle apo is 90 degree Okay, angle APO is 90 degree. A logic being, angle, why angle APO is 90 degree? Because the radius, uh, the, the perpendicular drawn, uh, the line drawn from the center of the circle to the chord uh, bisects the chord and is perpendicular chord. This is the theorem. We can write it like that. There is a line drawn, that is OP is a line drawn. OP is a line drawn to the chord to the chord AD and bisects it as he mentioned it, it bisects it so whichever chord whichever line drawn from the center of the circle to the chord bisects it is always perpendicular to the chord so that's that's why we can say op is perpendicular to the chord ad because it is bisecting it so that is the one it is perpendicular to okay so we can easily write here if this is bisecting that angle opa's value is 90 degree we can easily write angle opa value is 90 degree now, what else is further there? Now, we can see in triangle AOP, if you see triangle AOP, we have got uh, the angle APO as 90 degree and angle uh, AOP is already given out to be 60 degree. So, what remains the angle A? Angle A is nothing but by the angle sum property, the sum of the angles is 180 degree. So, angle is nothing, A is nothing but 180 minus the angle AOP, the angle AOP plus the angle APO. Okay, so we can easily write it for 180 minus 90 plus 60. So 90 plus 60 is 150, 180 minus 50 is 30 degree. Okay, 180 minus 90 plus 60, 90 plus 60 is 150, so 180 minus 150. So angle A is coming out to be 30 degree. Okay, this much is done. Now, what we can do also, we know that the tangent at any point of the circle is perpendicular to the radius through the point of contact. Angle A, B, C is 90 degree. Why so? Why this particular angle is 90 degree? Because, see, the, the tangent and the radius are always perpendicular to each other. That is the theorem. The tangent to the circle, that is BC here, and the radius of the circle, that is OB here. They are meeting at a point P. So, angle OBC is always going to be 90 degree because that's what the theorem says. The tangent and the radius are always perpendicular to each other. We can write it here like, tangent is always perpendicular to your radius. Okay, so by that logic, we can say angle OBC is nothing but 90 degree. Angle OBC is nothing but 90 degree. Or we can also say like that angle ABC is 90 because OBC is nothing but the smaller name for angle ABC. 
so we can also write angle ABC is equal to 90 degree now if you see the triangle bigger triangle ABC okay if you see the bigger triangle ABC your angle B has already become 90 degree or that is what is angle uh, ABC is angle B is 90 degree what else I know I know about angle A also angle A's value we just calculated in the earlier step that was 30 degree I'm supposed to find out the angle C so angle C is going to be what 180 minus angle B plus angle A that is 90 plus 30 if you add that together it comes out to be 60 degrees so the angle C's value is 60 degree that is the right answer okay let us go to the next part of it okay what is that is saying in the figure 2 x a y is tangent to the circle centered at o x a y is uh, a tangent okay we can see this is the tangent to the circle at the point a and uh, a b o is 40 degree that is already given this particular angle a b o is already given out to be 40 degree then find we are supposed to find out the angle b a y that is we are supposed to find out the b a y that is this angle we are supposed to find out angle b a y and what else we are supposed to find out an angle a o b also a o b we are supposed to find out the central angle a o b also okay let's just see the solution what what we can do about this okay so what all he has given he has given us uh, the angle a o b so if you see uh, talk about angle a o b so we can see in the triangle if you see the triangle a o b the a o and o b are the radius a o and o b are the radius okay so we know a theorem in which that uh, the in a triangle the angle opposite to the equal sides are also equal okay we know that angles opposite to angles opposite to equal sides angles opposite to equal sides are also equal that happens in a triangle okay so that in that way we can say that angle opposite to equal side the equal sides are ao and bo angle opposite to ao is uh, your angle uh, OBA and angle opposite to OB is angle OAB. So we can say that angle A or angle OAB is equal to also 40 degrees. We can say angle OAB is equal to 40 degree because that's what is angle OBA given to us. Okay. Now these two angles are equal. So uh, what will be the measure of the angle AOB? So angle AOB will be nothing but 180 minus some of the other two angles that is 40 plus 40. So it is going to be 100 degrees. So angle AOB is found out to be 100 degree. That is the second part that he had asked for. Angle AOB is 100 degree. Now we are supposed to find out the angle BAY also. So if you look at the figure, the particular angle BAY, this particular angle BAY has been created between the chord and the tangent. So and we already know what, what all is there. That angle OAY is going to be 90 degree. Okay. This particular angle, this OAY, this particular angle is going to be 90 degree. Why? Because we are saying angle OAY is equal to 90 degree. The reason behind that is because tangent and radius are always perpendicular. Tangent is always perpendicular to radius. We know this fact. We used this in the earlier question also. Tangent is always perpendicular to radius. So angle OAY will be 90 degree. But how is the angle OAY created? Angle OAY is the sum of angle OAB plus BAY. How can we write angle OAY? Angle OAY is the sum of angle OAB plus angle BAY. Okay. So angle OAY has been given 90 degree. We have just proved it. Angle OAB or the angle Angle OAB is nothing but 40 degree as proved in the first part of it. See, angle OAB was 40 degree plus angle BAY. So we are supposed to find out the BAY here and it can be easily found out. BAY is equal to 90 minus 40. That is 50 degree. So that is the measure of angle BAY and that earlier one was the measure of angle AOB. So these are the answers. Next, in mode of the following frequency distribution is 55 and the find the value of X. We are supposed to do this. Okay, so let us do it. Okay, there is class given, the frequency given. Okay, so let us see. Uh, mode he has given as 55. Let us try to find out where all the mode is uh, located. So we can say the mode lies in the class 45 to 65. The mode is lying where? Mode lies in the class of uh, 45 to 60 because that is 55. Mode is 55. So it lies in the class 45 to 60. So if you uh, see the class 45 to 60, we, you can easily tell that the lower class limit is 45 that is L is 45 F1 is 15 as against the 45 to 65 the frequency given is 15 itself what else F0 the frequency of the preceding class is going to be X class preceding to this class is the earlier one and the frequency there is X 
F2, frequency of the succeeding class. What is the frequency of the succeeding class? You can see it here. It is 10. So F2 value is taken as 10. H, H is nothing but the class width. How much is the class width? It is going to be 60 minus 45. That is nothing but 15. So this is the class width. Now we can use our formula for finding out the mode. The mode formula is nothing but mode is equal to lower class limit plus F1 minus F0 over twice of F1 minus F0 minus F2 multiplied by class width. Okay, so let us uh, put all the values. Mode is already given to us as 55. <laughs> Lower class limit is 45. Plus F1 is 15 minus F0 is X over twice of 15 minus F0 that is X minus F2 that is 10 into class width is 15. If we further solve this, this gives us 55 minus 45 is 10. So we can write down 10 here is equal to uh, 15 minus x over 30, 30 minus 10 is 20. So 20 minus x into 15. We can cut this 15 from both the sides by 5, 5 2 ja 10 and 5 3 ja 15. So we can simplify this equation and we can solve them by cross multiplying. We can get 40 minus 2x is equal to 45 minus 3x. And if you solve this further, this minus 2x goes, uh, this 3x comes in this side. So x is equal to 5. So the value of x is coming out to be 5 and which was asked in the question it given there. So x value is nothing but 5. That is the right answer. Now, what is there to be done in the question number 6? He is saying find the sum of first 20 terms of an AP whose nth term is given as a n is equal to 5 minus 2 n. So let us do something. He has defined a n as 5 minus 2 n. We are supposed to find out the sum of 20 terms. Okay, so let us find out the a Okay, for A, we need to put N equal to 1. So, that is going to be 5 minus 2. That is nothing but 3. So, the A value for this AP is 3. Let us find out second term. Second term will be for second term, we need to put N as 2. So, 5 minus 2 into 2. That is 5 minus 4, 1. So, the second term is 1. Let us try to find out D. D is nothing but A2 minus A1. The common difference, it is going to be 1 minus 3. That is nothing but minus 2. So, D comes out to be minus 2. So, with D as minus 2 and A as 3, we can have the sum of uh, n terms formula that is Sn is equal to n by 2, 2a plus n minus 1 d. Okay, that is the formula for sum. So, we are supposed to find out 20 terms sum. So, it is going to be 20 by 2 twice of a. A value is uh, 3 plus n minus 1 that is 20 minus 1 d is uh, minus 2. Okay, so if you solve this further, this is 10 is equal to 6 plus uh, rather minus 6 minus 19 into 2 okay this is what this is what it becomes this is 10 into 6 minus 38 that is nothing but 10 into minus 32 and ultimately it comes out to be minus 320 that is the right answer the sum of 20 terms of this particular equation is uh, this particular ap is minus 320 that 320 that is going to be the right answer next what are we supposed to do in this one? This question draw two concentric circles and see again this particular uh, uh, this particular uh, question is not uh, part of the current syllabus. This was removed, so we will not take this question. Okay, because it's not no more the part of the syllabus. Let's move to the next one. What is there in the next question? Question number eight. What all they saying? There's a figure given to us. AB is a tower of height 50 meter. A man standing on its top observed two cars on the opposite side of the tower with the angles of 30 and 45 degree respectively. <clears throat> so as you can see in the diagram, <clears throat> the angles are 30 degree and 45 degree. Okay, find the distance between the two cars. So we can easily write that angle of depression. Okay, we know that angle of depression. Angle of depression is equal to angle of elevation. Okay, we know this already angle of elevation. So, we can easily uh, make our 45 and 30 tra transferred on the downside. So, this becomes 30 degree. Okay. And this becomes 45 degree. These are the two angles that has been made. Now, we can one by one apply uh, our trigonometric ratios on the two triangles that are given to us. So, let us apply the first one. Okay. Uh, let us apply the uh, trigonometric uh, ratios in triangle ABD. Okay. If you see triangle ABD, we can easily use uh, 1045. Okay, 1045 is equal to perpendicular over base. The perpendicular of uh, ABD is AB and base is BD. So, AB value is known to us that is 50 over BD. Okay, and 1045 is nothing but 1. So, we can easily find out that BD value is coming out to be 
50 meter. Okay, this is the first thing done. Now, we are supposed to find out, uh, the. we are supposed to apply the trigonometric ratio in the other triangle, that is triangle A, B, C. If you see that, in triangle A, B, C, if you again apply the 10, 30 degree, that is equal to perpendicular over base. The perpendicular now is A, B. The base now is B, C. So, A, B value is again known to us, 50 over B, C. And what is the 10, 30 value? 10, 30 value is nothing but your 1 by root 3. Okay, so from here you can find out BC value is 50 root 3. Okay, so this is the BC value 50 root 3 and this is the BD value 50 meter. He has asked for find the distance between two cars. So distance between two cars is nothing but your uh, CD and that can be the sum of CB plus BD that, that both the values are there with us. So we can simply add them. So it is going to be 50 root 3 plus 50. Okay, we can take the 50 common always. So it's going to be 1 plus root 3. And if you put the value of uh, root 3 as 0 0.732, we can get the final answer as 50 into 2.732. And if you multiply further, it gives you the rounded off value as 136.6 meters. So that is going to be the right answer for your uh, the distance between the two cars, 136.6 meters. Okay, what is there in the ninth question? There are two parts of it. So we'll also solve it one by one. Let us have the part A. Okay, part A. Okay, what all is given? There is a class given. Mean of the following frequency distribution is 25. Mean is already given to us. We are supposed to find out the value of F. So, let us make the table once again. Okay, let us make the table once again. The class is given. Everything is given. So, let us make it. Okay, the first column will be always be class. Then it will be frequency Fi. Then it will be class marks Xi. Then it will be the product of Xi into Fi. This is how we make it. Okay, class is already given. Let us copy from there itself. 0 to 10, 10 to 20. 20 to 30 then it's going to be 30 to 40 and that's going to be 40 to 50 fi the frequency value was first is 5 then is 18 then is 15 then is f then is 6 xi value <clears throat> xi value are always the mid values of these classes so 0 to 10 the mid value is 5 mid value is 15 mid value is 25 mid value is 35 mid value is 45 so these are the mid values Okay, then xi into fi. Before that, let us do the summation fi as well. Summation fi is going to be the sum of all of them. The sum is coming out to be 44 plus f. If you add this particular column, this is this. Now, xi is also there. And we are supposed to do xi into fi. So, we need to product, multiply 5 into 5. That is 25. 18 into 15. That is 270. Then 15 into 25. That is 375. 35 into f is nothing but 35 f. 45 into 6 is nothing but 270 okay so this is summation this is xifi let us do the summation xifi as well that is the sum of them all so if you add them all you finally reach to 940 plus 35f okay so this is the summation xifi this is the summation fi what is the mean value mean value is always the mean x bar is given as summation xifi divided by summation fi Okay, the mean value is already given to us. That is 25 is equal to summation xi fi that is available with us is 940 plus 35 f divided by summation fi is going to be 44 plus of f. Let us do some cross multiplication and try to solve. If you do the cross multiplication, it, it becomes 1100 plus 25 f is equal to 940 plus 35 f. If you take the side chain, then it is going to be 1100 minus 940 is going to be uh, 160 is equal to uh, 10 f okay that gives you f value as 16 okay f value coming out to be 16 and that is the right answer so this is the a part let us go down to the b part now okay again now what else is given find the mean of the following data using assumed mean method we have to use the assumed mean method where we'll be assuming a mean okay so let us do it in the uh, little downside okay what what else is uh, what else is said class so let us make the table quickly okay the class is again 0 to 5, 5 to 10 and so on it is. Okay. So let us uh, make the table first. There is, it will be class. We are doing the part B from here. So let me write B here. B class is there. Then there will be frequency obviously. Then there will be class marks that is Xi. Then I will have assumed mean that a deviation from assumed mean that will be treated as Xi minus A where A will I will take as the assumed mean and then ultimately we will multiply di into fi. We will ultimately multiply di into fi. So let us write the classes quickly. First class is 0 to 5. Then it is 5 to 10. Then it is 10 to 15. Then it is 15 to 20. Then it is 20 to 25. These are the classes. What are the frequency that is given? The first one is 8. 
then it is 7, then it is 10, then it is 13, and then it is 12. These are the classes. So these are the frequencies. The class marks, that is the center value out of them. Okay, so let us write the uh, center values. The first value is 0 to 5. Center of 0 to 5 is 2.5. Center of 5 to 10 is 7.5. The center of 10 to 15 is 12.5. Center of, let me uh, draw these arrows so that there's no confusion. Okay, these are the corresponding uh, cells. Okay, the center of 15 to 20 is going to be 17.5. Center of 20 to 25 is going to be 22.5. These are the center values. Let us take assume mean as just the center value 12.5. So for this particular question, I am assuming assume mean to be 12.5. You can take any out of them. The answer will still will be right. You can take any assume mean. Somebody can take 7.5. Somebody can 70. Somebody can take 2.5 as well. There will be not any changes in the answer. Okay, so let me take the assume mean as 12.5. This is my assume mean. A is equal to 12.5. Now let me find out the DI. That is the difference between the actual class marks and the assume mean. So the first one is 2.5. Assume mean was 12.5. So the first difference will be uh, 2.5 minus 12.5. And that is going to be a minus 10. Okay, so the first DI is minus 10. Okay, the first DI is minus 10. In the next step, I need to do uh, subtraction of 7.5 and uh, 7 that is going to be your uh, the, the, the assume me sorry seven, the assume mean is 12.5 and I need to subtract uh, 7.5 from 12.5 so that, that this time it will be 5 for this one now in, in the next uh, thing I have to do 12.5 minus 12.5 that is obviously 0 in the next one 17.5 minus 12.5 that is 5 and the next one 22.5 minus 12.5 that is 10 so these are the di values now, uh, before that, let us do the summation FI also because that will be used here. Let us do the summation FI. So if you add all these values, this is giving you the value as 50. So summation FI is coming out to be 50. Now, let us do the DI into FI product. Okay, so DI into FI, the first one is going to be minus 80. That is the product of minus 10 and 8. Okay, minus 10 and 8 is going to be minus 80. Next product is going to be 5 into 7. That is nothing but uh, minus 35 because this value was minus 5 rather. Then it, was, it will be 10 into your 0. That, that is nothing but 0 here. Then it will be 5 into 13. That is nothing but 65 here. For this case, 0 for this case, minus 80 for this case. And the last one, 10 into uh, 12 for this case. So 10 into 12 is going to be 120. So these are the DIFI. If you do the summation of this, summation FI DI, if you add them together, this ultimately gives you 70. Okay, so this is the summation FIDI. This is the summation FI. Again, uh, the uh, let us use the formula for assume mean case. Okay, what is the formula for assume mean case? Here is the table. This particular table is actually required. So the assume mean was twelve point five, and summation FIDI has come. Now the required mean can be calculated for the method of assume mean. This is the actual formula: summation FIDI divided by summation FI. So if you write the values here, twelve point five. Plus summation FIDI value is going to be 70 divided by 50. If you solve this further, this gets cancelled. So you are ultimately doing how much? It's going to be 12.5 plus 1.4. If you add them together, this is going to be 13.9. So the actual mean is coming out to be 13.9. And that is the right answer for this case. Next. <clears throat> now height of 50 students of class 10th of a school are recorded and the following data is obtained height is given then the number of students are given okay in centimeter number of students are also given so okay so what we are supposed to do we are supposed to find out what we are first supposed to find out the median height okay so let us quickly make the cumulative frequency table out of this there is height as the first column then there is number of students okay number of students okay that we can take as frequency okay that is fi and then we'll take cumulative frequency. We'll assume that as CF, okay, cumulative frequency. Let us quickly write down the classes of height. That is first class is 130 to 135. Next is 130 to 135. Okay, let me rewrite this. Okay, the first class is 130 to 135. Next class is uh, 135 to 140. Then 140, 140 to 145. Then 145 to 150, then 150 to 155, and the last one 155 to 160. These are the classes. 
okay the frequency is already given so let me write it quickly 4 11 then you have 12 then you have 7 then 10 then 6 these are the frequencies we can immediately do summation fi also okay if you add the all the values the summation fi is coming out to be 50 cumulative frequency let us add first value is 4 itself next value is going to be 4 plus 11 that is 15 here next value is going to be 15 plus 12 that is 27 here if you keep on adding you are getting the value as 34 then 44 then 50 okay these are the cumulative frequency value now if you see that uh, n value is 50 okay so if you do n by 2 if you do n by 2 that is going to be 50 by 2 that is 25 okay so this particular 25 lies in which of which of the cumulative frequency range it lies in the 27 cumulative frequency range okay it lies in the frequency range 27 so uh, 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 corresponding to 27 the median class becomes okay corresponding to 27 the median class becomes which one the class of 27 that is nothing but 140 to 145 this is the median class now okay using this we can always find out the values the lower limit is obviously 140 then your cumulative frequency is nothing but 15 f value is 12 and the class width is 145 minus 140 that is nothing but 5 now let us apply the formula of median the formula of median says l plus n by 2 minus cumulative frequency divided by f into h that is the formula for your median let us put all the values okay to find out the median lower class limit was uh, your 140 plus n by 2 was nothing but uh, 25 minus cumulative frequency is 15 divided by 12 that is the frequency value okay into the class width is 5 if you solve this further this is coming out to be 140 plus 25 minus 15 is 10 by 12 into 5 okay if you further solve this this comes out to be 140 plus 4.17 that is nothing but 144.17 so that is the actual median value and the right answer 144.17 okay let us go to the next one what we are supposed to do in this question is see there is a circle drawn and we are supposed to find out uh, the thing that is he is asking for okay let us take it one by one what is that he is saying in figure 4 pq is a chord of length 8 cm of circle radius 5 cm the tangent at p and q meet at point t find the length of tp okay so this is the diagram that is given to us so we can always mark all the value that is given to us so po is the radius so this is 5 okay we can write down here okay and the pq is the chord of length 8 so the pq's length is 8 okay the chord length that is length of pq is going to be 8 centimeter okay now this line is also joined so now let us see what what all we can be uh, can be done in this so obviously tangent from an external point see there is a theorem the tangent drawn from the external point to the circle are also equal so tangent have been drawn from point t so tp is equal to tq okay so the first thing that comes out is tp is equal to tq because the tangent drawn, drawn from outside a point outside a point point outside a circle to the circle are always equal in length so tp is equal to tq that is the theorem so if tp is equal to tq so triangle t q p becomes a isosceles triangle isn't that right triangle t p u q becomes a isosceles triangle okay isosceles triangle whose both the side whose two sides are equal okay now we also know that a tangent from external point are equally inclined to the segment okay the tangents are equally inclined that means the tangent tp and tqr the tangent tp and tqr equally inclined that means the angle ptr that is this angle that is drawn here and the other angle rtq they are also equal because that is the theorem says the tangents are equally inclined so we can say that angle pt r is equal to angle r t q so o t becomes the so, so in this process o t becomes the angle bisector o t is angle bisector o t becomes the angle bisector of the bigger angle p t q o t becomes the angle bisector of bigger angle p t q or we can also write o t is perpendicular to p q why we can write OT is perpendicular to PQ? Because, see, the, the triangle uh, TQP was an isosceles triangle and in an isosceles triangle, okay, this is a property of the isosceles triangle, in an isosceles triangle, the angle bisector, the angle bisector, whichsoever side, uh, whichsoever is the angle bisector is also perpendicular or altitude, we can write the altitude, okay, the angle bisector is itself the altitude or the perpendicular, 
okay so in this uh, with this knowledge we can say that ot is perpendicular to pq because ot is the angle bisector also of the triangle and in isosceles triangle this is the property that the angle bisector of the opposite vertices is also per perpendicular to the other side okay to perpendicular to the third side that's what we have concluded ot is perpendicular to pq so we can always show here ot is perpendicular to pq okay so now what what can be coming out of this is angle orp is equal to angle TRP, okay, and it is equal to 90 degree, okay, angle ORP is equal to angle TRP, and that is equal to 90 degree, angle ORP is angle TRP, that is equal to 90 degree, now, if you see the triangle ORP from here, triangle ORP, this, these results we have obtained, now let us see the triangle ORP, so, in triangle ORP, we can always apply the Pythagoras law, because it has been proven out to be the right triangle, so, OR can be found out as, as per the uh, Pythagoras law, the hypotenuse square, hypotenuse of that is 5 square minus PR square, that is the other side, 5 square minus PR square. And we can say that PR value is 4, okay? The value of PR is 4. How come the PR value is 4? Because see, perpendicular from the center to a chord, bisect the chord always, okay? Per perpendicular from the center of the chord, bisect the chord also. The whole chord was of 8 centimeter. The PQ was of whole 8 centimeter. And because this particular angle is a 90 degree, okay, this particular angle is a 90 degree and perpendicular from the center of the uh, circle bisects the chord always. So, PR is equal to RQ. What we can say here, PR is equal to RQ because that is a perpendicular drawn that has been separated by a perpendicular drawn from the center. So, PR is equal to RQ will be equal to how much? 4 centimeter. Okay, so in place of PR, I can use in my Pythagorean Pythagoras theorem as 4. So, OR value comes out to be how much? Under root of 25 minus 16, that is under root of 9, that is nothing but 3 centimeters. So, my OR has already come out to be 3 centimeter. Okay, now let us use this result further. OR has come out to be 3 centimeter. Let us use the result further. Okay, what else we can do? Now, since our OR has come out to be 3 centimeter, now we also know angle OPT is going to be 90 degree. Angle O PT is equal to 90 degree because just we have done the radius is tangent to the point of contact because why we are doing this because radius is always perpendicular to the tangent okay why we are saying angle our OPT is 90 degree because the radius is always perpendicular to the tangent and the radius OP is perpendicular to the PT that's why the angle OPT is 90 degree okay now if angle OPT is 90 degree then we can again apply the Pythagoras in this that is TP square is equal to, we are applying the tri uh, uh, Pythagoras in uh, our triangle OTP. So, in triangle OTP, if we apply the Pythagoras theorem, we are going to get TP square is equal to PR square. No, TP square is equal to OT square minus OP square. Okay, TP square is equal to OT square minus OP square. But here, OT we know is a summation of uh, TR plus RO. So, we can, an RO we have already proven out to be 3 centimeter, that is OR. So, we can every time write this as TR plus 3 whole square minus 5 square, okay. So, we can write this as equation number 1. But if you go to the other triangle, if you see the triangle PRT and from there you try to find out the value of TP square. So, from there TP square is going to be how much? PR square plus TR square, okay. And we already know PR value is 4, so it is going to be 4 square plus TR square. So, this is equation number 2. Both the equations are referring to TP square only. Both the equations are referring to TP square only. So, the both the right-hand sides can be made equal to each other. So, that's what we're going to do. Okay, so from equation number 1 and 2, if you see from equation number 1 and 2, you can easily write TR plus 3 whole square minus 5 square is equal to 4 square plus TR square and we can solve this further. If you solve this further, this is going to be TR square plus 9 plus uh, 6 TR that is A plus B is whole square we have opened minus 25 is going to be 16 plus TR square and we can cut the TR square from both the sides because it is available both sides. If you solve this further, then you're going to get 6 TR is equal to 41 minus 9 that is nothing but 32. So TR value comes out to be 16 by 2. 16 by 3 tr is 16 by 3 with the, with the result found as tr is equal to 16 by 3 we're going to do it further what is that now equation from equation number 2 if you see the equation number 2 okay you can use the tr value equation number 2 said tp square is equal to 4 square plus 
TR square. So we can write here 16 plus TR value is 16 by 3. So 16 by 3 square. If you solve this further, this comes out to be 144 plus 256 by 9. And that is nothing but 400 by 9. So that is the TP square value. So how much is TP is the under root of that. That is 20 by 3 centimeters. So ultimately the TP value is coming out to be 20 by 3 centimeter. And that is going to be the right answer. Now, they say a two-digit number is such that the product of its digits is 24. And if 18 is subtracted from the number, the digit interchange their places. Find the number. Okay, let us start solving this. The part A of question number 12. Okay, let us say that the uh, unit digit is. Okay, let us assume the unit digit of the number. The two-digit number is say X. And let us say the 10 digit. That is the 10 digit number of the, the number that we are asking for is Y. So if the unit digit is X and the 10 digit Y, so obviously the number becomes 10 into Y plus X. Okay, that is the number become 10 times the 10 digit plus one time the unit digit. That is that becomes the number. Okay, one more thing they have said is the product of the digits is 24. So we can always take X, Y is equal to 24. X into Y is 24. Then the equation said, if 18 is subtracted from the number, let us subtract 18 from the number. 10y plus x is our number minus 18. Then they say the digits interchange their places. So if the digits interchange their places, that means that uh, x becomes the 10 digit. So the number will be 10x plus y digit. The y becomes the unit digit. So 10x plus y. So if you solve this further, this will give you 9y uh, minus 9x is equal to 18. Okay, so this is equation 1, this is equation 2. Okay, let us put the value of uh, uh, x or y or anything we can do. Let us put the value of y from equation number 2. y from equation number 2 is obviously 24 by x. So from equation number 2, y equal to 24 by x, we will put into equation number 1 and try to solve it. So if we solve it, see, uh, this can also be manipulated further. y minus x is 18. So 9 cancels the 18 by 2. So we can write down y minus x is going to be 2. Let us put the value of y that is 24 by x minus x is going to be 2. Okay. If you take the LCM out of it, then you can all, every time you can create the equation. So it becomes 24 minus x square is equal to 2x. Or we can say, say x square minus x square plus 2x minus 24 is equal to Zero. That is our equation. If you solve this, we can always break this into x square plus 6x minus 4x minus 24 is equal to 0. Let's take x common. So it will be x plus 6. Let's take minus 4 common. It will be x plus 6 again equal to 0. So there are two values of x coming, x minus 4 and x plus 6 equal to 0. So one value of x is 4. Another value of x is minus 6. But x cannot be minus 6 as the they are, we, are, we are searching for the digits so digit cannot be a negative one so x equal to minus six cannot be taken right so the right value of x is four okay so the right value of x is four then y was how much y was 24 by x so y will be equal to 24 by four that is nothing but six so your number becomes they had asked for the number so number will be we assume the number out to be uh, 10y plus x that was our number so you have to use it 10 into 6 plus 4, that is nothing but 64. So the number that satisfies the equation is 64. And that is the right answer only. Okay. Let us do the B part of this question. Let us do the B part here. Okay. What is there given in the B part? They say the difference of the squares of two number is 180. And the square of the smaller number is 8 times the greater number. Find the two numbers. Okay. This is the question given to us. Okay. So let us assume some something. Let us assume the greater number is x. Let us say the greater number. Okay. Let us say the greater number is x. And let us at the same time we take smaller number as smaller number as y. We have assumed two things. The first thing is said the difference of the squares of the two numbers is 180. So we can anytime write x square minus y square is equal to 180. That is equation number one. Then he said square of the smaller number is eight times the greater number. So what is the smaller number is y. The square of the smaller number that is y square is uh, 8 times the greater number. So y square is 8 times the greater number is x. So y square is equal to 8x. That is going to be second equation. So if we use second and first, you can anytime replace the y square value 
from equation number two to equation number one. If you do that, you're going to get a x square minus eight x minus 180 is equal to zero. Okay, we can break this down x square uh, minus 18 x plus 10 x minus 180 equal to zero. Okay, then we can take x common and we're going to get x minus 18 plus 10 common then again x minus 18 is equal to 0 so there are two values of x coming one is minus 10 another value is 18 it cannot be uh, minus 10 because uh, it cannot be a negative number then uh, again we have to do uh, the value of x as we have to take x, x value as 18 so the x value comes out to be 18 the 18 is nothing but the 18 is nothing but the greater number we are supposed to find out the smaller number okay we can anytime find y square is equal to 8 into 18 this is what our equation number 2 that is nothing but y square is equal to 144 so 144 is the square of whom square of 12 so y's value is coming out to be 12 so the greater number x becomes as 18 and the smaller number y becomes as 1 2 that is 12 so these are the two numbers that were asked in a in the part b 18 and 12 that is the right answer Now, there is a case study given. We are supposed to solve this. There is a kite festival situation they have shown. On 14th January, it is celebrated International Kite Day. Okay. The people visit the festival by flying various kinds of kites. So, there is a question related to this. Let us uh, focus on the question. Okay. They are saying, let us focus on the question directly. There is a diagram being drawn and they are saying in figure 5, the angle of elevation of two kites point A and B from the hands of a point C. So, here is the hand. Okay, there where the hand is located and they are flying two kites. One is kite number B and one is kite B and another is kite A. The kite B is uh, uh, flying at a height of 60 meter as mentioned here and kite A is flying at the height of 50 meter as mentioned here. And the angle of elevation of the kites uh, are 30 degree and 60 degree respectively as given here. Now we are supposed to find out AD is 50 meter. That is the height is uh, of both the kites have been given 50 and 60. So in the first part, we are supposed to find out the length of the string that is used to take them straight for the kite A and B and shown. So we have to fi find out the length of the string. Obviously, the strings are uh, BC and AC. The st two strings are BC and AC. So let us take it one by one. Let us use the triangle ADC first. Okay. In triangle ADC, if you use the sine 30, okay, we'll use the sine 30 is equal to sine 30 is always uh, perpendicular upon hypotenuse. So your uh, sine 30 will be perpendicular is AD over hypotenuse is AC. That is nothing but uh, AD is 50 as given in the question over uh, C AC that is unknown. Okay, and sine 30 value is nothing but 1 by 2. So, we can find out AC as AC value is nothing but 100 meter. Okay, using this, using the cross multiplication thing, we can always say that AC value is 100 meter. Now, at the same time, we'll apply the uh, trigonometric ratio in the other triangle, that is triangle BEC. If you use the triangle BEC, you can always have a sine 60 in the scene. Okay, if you take sine 60, sine 60 is again going to be perpendicular over hypotenuse. Perpendicular value is 60 and the hypotenuse for the triangle BEC is going to be BC. And the sine 60 value is nothing but root 3 by 2. So, from here, you can always find out the uh, BC value and the BC value comes out to be, if you use the cross multiplication thing, the BC value is coming out to be 120 by root 3 or you can call it as 40 root 3 meters okay this is the value of bc so bc comes out to be 40 root 3 meter ac comes out to be 100 meter and that's what they had asked the length of the stream so the length of the streams are uh, 100 meter and 40 root 3 meters so the first part is solved let us focus on the second part okay let us focus on the second part what is there in the second part they have asked uh, the distance d between these two kites okay we are supposed to find out the distance between these two kites the distance total distance is nothing but d if you see the distance between both the kites is nothing but d so we are supposed to find out the distance d okay and uh, uh, d is the uh, the distance on the ground but they have asked for the distance d okay so we are supposed to find out the ab rather okay we are supposed to find out the ab because that's what is the distance d given so we'll be finding the a B okay for that particular thing see we can always write see DC is a straight line it, it is on the ground so we can always use the angle uh, theorem okay but we can say that angle we can start writing from here angle DCA plus angle ACB 
plus angle BCE. That is a part of the triangle. Okay. DCA is this particular angle. Okay. Angle uh, CBA is this particular angle and angle BC. So because they are part of the triangle, so the angle sum property of the triangle says the angle sum should be 180 degrees. So the angle is 180 degree. But if you see the angle DCA, okay, what is how much is angle DCA? Okay. If you see angle DCA, that is already given out to be 30 degree. So we can in place of DCA, we can write 30 degree plus angle ACB is still unknown to us. So we'll just write ACB for this plus angle BC. BC is already known to us. That is 60 degree. Okay. Is equal to 180 degree. Why we are doing this? Because these are the angle all falling in the straight line. Okay. See, uh, DC is a straight line and always a straight line has got an angle as 180 degree. Okay. The straight line is a straight angle that is 180 degrees. So these are the part of those straight angle DCA, ACB and BCE. Okay. So their sum was 180 degrees. So now if you add it like that, then ACB angle ACB comes out to be 180 minus 90. That is 90 degree. So our angle ACB, which is here is 90 degree value. So we can, we can always say the triangle ACB is a right triangle, is a right triangle where angle a C B is equal to 90 degree. Okay. This is what we have proved. Now our angle A C B comes out to be right 90 degrees. So we can every time apply the Pythagoras theorem in the in the particular triangle. So let us apply the Pythagoras theorem in triangle our A C B. Okay, where A B becomes the hypotenuse. So the A B square is equal to hypotenuse square is equal to perpendicular square over base square plus B base square. So A C square plus B C square. This was this is what it becomes. Okay, and AB is nothing but D, so we can replace AB by D. So D square is equal to 100 square that we already know the AC value as 100 as we calculated in the first part plus BC square. We also know the BC value we calculated in the first part that is 40 root 3 whole square. Okay, this is going to be 10,000 plus this is going to be 40 root 3 square is going to be 1600 root 3 that is 4800. Okay, so if you add them together, this becomes 14,800, that is what is D square. And if you take the under root of this, this is going to be D is, is going to be 20 root 37 meters. Okay, the distance D is coming out to be 20 root 37 meter. And that's what was asked, the distance between A and B. Now, there's again a case study given to us. What they are saying is a circus is a company of performers who put on shows and acrobats. And we all know the circus. We we get entertained in, in by going to a circus. Okay, there are so many activities that are happening always. And they say they started around 250 years back and so on. So let us focus on the question more. Okay, they say that there's a, a tent in the shape of cylinder surmounted by a conical top. Okay, let us focus on the question part that is given to us so we can every time draw this okay they are saying there's a cylinder surmounted by a conical top so let us draw a cylinder first and we'll then surmount it by a conical top so the, here it goes a cylinder this is a cylindrical shape okay this is a cylindrical shape okay and they say this is surmounted by a conical top so let's make a cone out of it okay this is how they are surmounted by a conical top and this is shape of the tent what else is given to us He's saying uh, the, if the height and diameter of the cylindrical part are 9 and 30. So the height of the uh, cylinder is 9 meter. So this particular height is 9 meter. And diameter of the cylinder is 30 meter. So the whole dia from here to here, whole diameter is 30 meters. This is how we have drawn. Okay, the height is 9 meter. What else? And height of conical part is 8 meter. They said the height of the conical part, that is the vertical height is 8 meter. So from here to here is 8 meter with the same diameter as that of the cylindrical part. So the cone part has also got the same diameter as the cylinder part itself. Okay. Now what else uh, is given? Okay. What are supposed to find out? The area of the canvas used for making the tent. So see area of the canvas that will be used for making the tent will be simply the curved surface area of both the figures. Okay, will be simply the curved surface area of both the figures as we can understand. So, uh, for getting into the curved surface area, we need to find out the radius first. So, radius of the cylinder, okay, radius of the cylinder will be 30 by 2, that is going to be 15 meter, and that same will be the radius of the cone because the diameter of both the things are same. So, radius of the cone is also. 15 meter we have got the height okay for finding out the curved surface area of the cone we are supposed to find out the slant height and the slant height is given as l and that can be calculated by the formula of r square plus h square where h is nothing but the height of the cone 
Okay, h is nothing but the height of the cone that is already given as eight. So we're gonna use this to find the the slant height that is going to be r square plus h square. R square is fifteen square plus h square is uh, height of the uh, cone is uh, your eight. So it is going to be eight square. If you solve this further, this comes out to be two twenty five plus sixty four. That is nothing but two eighty nine. So the slant height l comes out to be root two eighty nine is nothing but seventeen meter. Okay. So the slant height we can draw it here also. The slant height is this particular height and it is coming out to be seventeen meter. Okay. This is what it is coming out to be. This was required because we are supposed to find out the curved surface area. Now the first question asks the area of canvas used for making the tent. So area of canvas that is to be used will be equal to curved surface area of cone plus the same curved surface area of the cylinder okay this is what we are supposed to do curved surface area of both the shapes okay so let us write the formula area of canvas curved surface area of cone is given by pi r l plus curved surface area of the cylinder is given by 2 pi r h where h is the height of the cylinder okay and l is the slant height of the cone that is already mentioned r is the uh, radius of the cone r this r is the radius of the uh, let us write cone for this and height is uh, the r is for radius of the cylinder okay although in this question the radius of the cylinder and radius of cone are same okay so now we can put the values either we can take the common uh, because radius are same so we can take pi r as common so we remain with length of the cone slant height of uh, slant height of the cone plus 2 of twice of height of cylinder okay if you take common and then let us put the values inside if you put the values inside pi is 22 by 7 into radius is 15 into uh, lc length, length of the slant height is 17 plus twice of height of the cylinder is your uh, height of the cylinder is 9 okay so this this comes out to be 22 by 7 into 15 into 35 Okay, this is what it comes out to be. If you solve this further, this gives you 7, 5, 35, 15, 5, 75 into 22. 75 into 22 will give you 1650 meter square. Okay, so the area of the canvas required is 1650, that is 1650 meter square. That was the part one. Let us focus on the second part now. Okay, let us focus on the second part. What all is uh, he is asking in the second part is. The cost of the canvas bought for the tent at the rate of 200 meter square um, per square meter rupees if 30 square meter canvas was wasted during stretching. Okay, this is what they have asked. So let us understand what all he is saying. Area of canvas bought for the rent. See how much is the area that has been bought. We are doing the second part. Area of canvas that has been bought. Area of canvas that has been bought for tent. Okay, how much is that area? That is obviously 1650, that is 1650 plus 30 because he said they are saying the 30 meter with 30 square meter will be wasted. So, but then, but then 1650 meter square will be used, but we have to buy the whole uh, area. We have to buy the 30 square meter also because that will be wasted when you do stretching. But we'll have to buy the total value. So, the total value comes out to be 1680 square. Meter. So this is what is the total value of the canvas will be uh, that will be uh, bought. Now the cost of canvas bought for the tent is how much is the cost? They are saying the cost is at the rate of 200 per square meter. So the cost of canvas now will be okay for for one uh, for one square meter it is 200 rupees. So for 1680 square meter it will be 1680 into 200. Okay, if you solve this further, this comes out to be three lakh thirty six thousand rupees. Okay, this comes out to be 3,36,000 rupees or rupees 3,36,000 and that is going to be the right answer, the cost of the canvas. Now, the question says, uh, solve the quadratic equation x square minus 2ax plus a square minus b square equal to 0 for x. Okay, so let us try to manipulate this particular equation. So, how we can write this x square minus how we can write this particular equation so that the value remains same a plus b plus a minus b and we can have x outside then we can manipulate it as plus a square minus b square equal to 
zero. So what we have done, we have manipulated uh, this particular uh, the center term. That is what we have done. Let us show it in rough. In place of minus two a x, what we have done minus is away. In place of two x, we have written a plus b plus a minus b, and then there is x outside. So if you solve this, what does it give you? Minus is still outside. It gives you a plus b plus a minus b and then x outside and this will cancel out the b and b so we'll ultimately remain with minus of 2a x so this is what is minus of 2 x here and this is what is minus of 2 so what we have done we have done a little manipulation so that we can solve the equation in an easy way so that's what has been done now let us further go into the deeper steps now what we can do x square minus <clears throat> a plus b x minus a minus b x plus a plus b a minus b equal to zero okay what we have done we have done nothing but we have expanded the a square minus b square see the formula for a square minus b square is what is a plus b into a minus b so what we have we have done the same thing you expanded the a square minus b square as a plus b into a minus b and the rest of the things are still the same and multiplied the x inside okay multiply the x in both the steps okay multiplied like that now we can take the x part in common and we can take the a plus b and a minus b also common so what we can do is x square in place of x square we can just write x now x minus a plus b okay and then minus we can take the a minus b part as common and if we take the a minus b part as common we're gonna leave, uh, remain with x minus a plus b equal to zero what we have done we have taken the x part common in one portion and we have taken the a plus a minus b part common in the other portion okay now if we further simplify this this reaches to x minus a plus b x minus a plus b and this whole x is outside and the other factor that becomes is x minus a minus b these are the two factors that are becoming here okay x minus a minus b and this is equal to zero so we can easily see that x is getting two values one is a plus b and one is a minus b so the x value is first value of x is simply a plus b and the other value of x can be a minus b and that is what is the solution available a plus b and a minus b that is the answer for x <coughs> now there's a, a diagram here there's a triangle shown the two men on either side of a cliff 75 meter height so the clip available is a b a b is that particular cliff okay and they are having an angle of elevation as 30 degree and 60 degree okay so the men are standing at position c and d and they are having the uh, top of the cliff's elevation as 30 degree and 60 degree respectively okay height of the cliff is given as 75 meters okay that is already given in the question and that what they are uh, asking they are asking for the find the distance between two men that is we are supposed to find out the distance between two men that is cd okay this is what we are supposed to find out the distance cd okay so let us go one by one let us take the triangle abd first if you take the triangle abd first okay you can have 1060 okay 1060 is nothing but 10 of any theta is nothing but perpendicular over base so perpendicular of triangle abd is going to be ab and the base is obviously ad okay and 1060's value is nothing but root 3 so we can every time write root 3 is equal to ab ab is already given the height of the clip that is 75 over ad so from here we can find out ad value as 75 over root 3 and we can always multiply it by root 3 and root 3 in both numerator and denominator so it gives us 75 root 3 over 3 that is nothing but 25 root 3 so the ad value comes out to be 25 root 3 and obviously the unit is meter now we are, we are supposed to apply the <coughs> the similar uh, trigonometric ratio in the other triangle that is in triangle abc if you apply we can apply 10 30 okay that is again going to be perpendicular over base that is nothing but 75 over the base this time is ac and the 10 30 value is nothing but 1 over root 3 10 30 value is nothing but 1 over root 3 so from here we can find out uh, that uh, uh, 75 root 3 okay that is the value of ac okay now he had asked me to find out asked us to find out the distance d distance d is nothing but distance d is nothing but ad plus ca okay or ad plus ac so we have both the values that is 25 root 3 plus 75 root 3 okay 25 root 3 plus 75 root 3 
and if you add them together you're gonna get the value as 100 root 3 okay let me do it here you're gonna get the ultimate value of distance d is 100 root 3 and if you uh, put the value of root 3 that is 1.732 if you multiply it gives you uh 173.2 meters so the distance between a uh, the two men is dc that is 173.2 meters that is the right answer next construct a pair of tangent to a circle of radius so this was again not part of the syllabus so the this question solution is not provided for the same reason okay let us have the another one okay section c 11 to 14 so let us do it one by one the first part is a what is there in the first part they are saying sum of two numbers is 34 if three is subtracted from the one number and two is added to another number the product of these two numbers becomes 260 okay so let us have let us assume the numbers first let the numbers are let the numbers are x and y respectively the first condition he says is the sum of the two numbers is 34 so we can every time write x plus y is equal to 34 we can every time write this as an equation number one the other one he says if three is subtracted from one so let us subtract three from one and two is added to another so y plus two and their product is taken they are saying if their product is taken that the product of these two numbers becomes two six so this is we are making as a equation number two okay so let us replace the y value from equation number one into equation number two okay the y value from the equation number two is y value from the equation number one is 34 minus x so we'll replace 35 minus x as y in the equation number two if we do that we're going to get as x minus three and for, for for y we will write 34 minus x plus 2 is equal to 260 if we further solve this this is x minus 3 into 36 minus x is going to be 260 if you keep on multiplying this will give you uh, x square minus 39 x plus 368 is equal to 0 okay you will land up to the final step of the equation as x square minus 36 39 x plus 368 now this is our equation that is required to be solved so we can do it by uh, shridharachara also we can break the parts also so if we try to break the part it can be broken down as minus uh, 16 x plus 23 x because 16 and 23 are the factors of uh, 368 and who's who can be operated to give you minus 39 that is in the center so and plus 368 is equal to 0 let us further break this down so x square minus 16x minus 23x plus 368 is equal to 0 let us take the x common so it is x minus 16 plus <laughs> again take the uh, minus take the 23 common so it will rather take plus 23 common it will again give you uh, okay if you take minus minus take common okay take the minus part common if you take the minus common this is a minus sign okay this is a minus sign here if you take the minus 23 common it will give you x minus 16 again equal to 0 so let us break this out down again this is going to be x minus 23 the first factor the another factor is x minus 16 is equal to 0 these are the two factors so we're going to get the two values x value as 23 and x value as 16 so there are two values of x coming so we'll have to use them one by one if your x value is 23 then y value will be 34 minus 23 24 minus 23 that is going to be 11 so one set of value as an answer can be 23 and 11 if you use x as 16 then y value will be 34 minus 16 that is nothing but your 18 so another set of value that can you can get is 18 okay so the other set of value is 16 and 18 so this condition can be fulfilled by two set of values one is uh, 23 and uh, uh, 11 and the other set is 16 and 18 so these are the answers only okay let us go to the b part of the question okay let us go to the b part they are saying hypotenuse of a right angle triangle so let us draw this okay what are saying in the b part let us draw that uh, they are saying is okay let us stay till here and then we can read it from there let us make it a little more up okay now what are they saying the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle so let us make a right angle triangle this is our right angle triangle hypotenuse of a right angle triangle this is a right angle at hey this position let us have the values uh, the vertices as a b and c let us place the opposite side let us place the see the opposite side in front of the vertice b we always take as small b the opposite side up, uh, opposite uh, side to the vertice c we always take as small c okay and opposite side to the vertice a 
or the angle A is always taken as small a. So this is how we have taken created the angle so that we can name the sides in place of AC. We can just write B. Now they are saying is hypotenuse in right angle triangle is 6 cm. So hypotenuse is 6 cm more than twice the length of the shortest side. Okay. So we don't know which one is the shortest side. So we'll have to assume. Okay. So let us assume the uh, shortest side as what we are assuming the shortest side we are assuming as a okay we don't know which side is shorter so we can assume anything let us assume the shorter side is a now the first uh, condition says hypotenuse is six centimeter more than twice the length of shorter side our hypotenuse is b is six centimeter more than six plus twice the shorter side so b is equal to six plus two that is our first equation okay then the second one is say if the length of third side third side is now which one c Okay, length of the third side is 6 cm less than twice the length of the shorter side. So, we can every time make this. Length of the third side, that is C, is equal to uh, 6 cm less than thrice the length of shorter side. Thrice the length of shorter side is 3A minus 6. So, this is our equation number 2. So, these are the two equations that has been created from the question. And we are supposed to find the dimension of the triangle. That is, we are supposed to find out all the sides A, B and C. Okay, these are the two equations that are there with us. Now, as they say, there's a right triangle triangle. So, we can every time apply the Pythagoras law. If you apply the Pythagoras law, the hypotenuse square is always going to be equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So, this is what you're going to apply. Let us put all the values. Okay, 6 plus 2a whole square is going to be your uh, 3a minus 6 whole square plus a square. Okay, this is what is the Pythagoras law. Okay, now let us expand this. This is going to be 36 plus 4a square. We are opening by a plus b is whole square plus 2 into 6. That is 2 into 6 into 2a is equal to, let us open it from a minus b whole square. There is going to be 9a square plus 36 minus 2 into 6 into 3a plus a square. If you solve this further, how much is it is becoming? Okay, this is becoming, if you solve this, this ultimately becoming 60a is equal to 6a square. Okay, so we can anytime get a value as 10 from this. 6 cuts the 10 by 10 and a cuts the 1 power of a square. So, a value coming out to be 10. So, if the a is 10, we can anytime go to equation 1 and we can find out b. b value will be 6 plus twice of 10. That is nothing but 26. Okay, the B value will be 26 and then using B, we can find out the C also. C value will be 3A minus 6. That is nothing but 3 into 3 into 10 minus 6. 3 into 10 minus 6. That is how much is 24. So, these are the dimension of the triangle. The sides are, the sides are your 10. A is equal to 10. B is equal to uh, 26 and C is equal to 20 four and all of them are in centimeters okay all of them are in centimeters so these are the dimension of the triangle that is given there okay so what does he say in the question the first question is part a okay if in an ap if the sum of third and seventh term is zero find its fifth term so let us assume that the third term of this ap is a3 and let us assume that the seventh term of this AP is A7. And he's saying the sum of A3 and A7 is 0. Okay, that is the first thing he's saying. So, how do we find out A3? Using the formula Tn is equal to A plus N minus 1D. This is the formula for n term. So, our A3 can be calculated as A plus N minus 1. That is 3 minus 1. So, 2D plus how can we calculate A7? A plus 7 minus 1. That is 60. So, A plus 60. And is equal to 0. If you solve this. This comes out to be 2a plus 8d is equal to 0. If we take 2 common, it becomes a plus 4d is equal to 0. So, we can ultimately write a plus 4d is equal to 0. But this a plus 4d is nothing but the a5. Okay. If you look at it carefully, a plus 4d is nothing but a5. Okay. So, that's what he had asked. Find the fifth term. So, fifth term becomes 0. So, the a5 value is 0. Okay. This is the answer. <coughs> Let us do the B part. Okay. What is there in the B part? He's saying determine the AP whose third term is 5 and seventh term is 9. So let's say he says third term is 5. So let me write A3 is 5. He says seventh term is 9. Let me write A7 is 9. Okay. So what all A3 and A7 are? If you want to write. So A3 is A plus 2D by the same formula. 
and what is a7 is a plus 60. So these are the two values given. Let us assign this as equation number one, this as equation number two. <clears throat> now, if you want to solve these two equations, we can subtract. If you subtract equation two minus one, then a and a gets cancelled. We remain with 4d is equal to four. So d value comes out to be one. With d equal to one, I can put this d equal to one in any of the equation. Let me put this in first equation. So I can calculate a a plus 2 is equal to 5. So a value comes out to be 3. So the a is 3 and d is 1. So we can anytime frame our ap. Okay. So ap can be a, then a plus d, then a plus 2d and so on. It can keep on continuing. So a value is 3. A plus d is 3 plus 1, 4. A plus 2d, 3 plus 2, that is 5. And this is the ap that is there, which is asked in the question. And that is the right answer. Now, what he's saying in this question, they are saying from a point on a bridge across a river, the angle of depression on the banks on opposite side of the river is 30 degree and 45 degree. If the height of the uh, bridge is 8 meter from the banks, then find the width of the river. Okay. So this is the diagram that has been given to us. The A is the point where the, the person is uh, standing and he's observing the two ends of the river. One end is B, another end is D and he's observing the angle of depression as 45 degree and 30 degree respectively with B and D. So as we know, angle of depression is equal to angle of elevation. So this 45 degree can be transferred here. So this 45 degree is e here. Similarly, 30 degree can be transferred as here. Okay, so these are the two angles, 45 degree and 30 degree. Now let us apply in triangle ABC. <clears throat> let us see the triangle ABC and let us apply 1045. Okay, 1045 is nothing but perpendicular over base. Perpendicular value is AC. Base value is BC. I have my perpendicular as 8 over BC value is unknown. So this is what it is, which is equal to 1 because 1045 value is 1. So here I can conclude the BC value is nothing but 1, 8 meter. Okay, this is the first thing that has come. BC is 8 meter. Now let us apply the uh, this 10 property in the triangle ACD. Okay, there is the angle is 30 degrees. So 10, 30 degrees is equal to again perpendicular over base. Perpendicular is again the AC over base is CD this time. AC value is 8 meter, the height of the uh, the bridge and CD is unknown. Similarly, 10, 30 value comes out to be 1 by root 3. So this is 1 by root 3. Now from here we can solve for CD. CD comes out to be 8 root 3 meter cd comes out to be 8 root 3 meter but we are supposed to calculate we are supposed to calculate the width of the river the width of the river is ultimately this this is the ultimate width of the river bd okay so we want to know the bd bd can be easily calculated as bc plus cd this is how we can calculate the bd so we have both the values 8 plus 8 root 3 so we can take 8 as common so we remain with 1 plus root 3 Okay, we can put the value of root 3 as 1.732. So we remain with 2.732. And if we multiply this together, the ultimate answer comes out to be 21.856 meters. Okay, so this is what is the width of the river 21.856 meter and the required answer. Next, he's saying construct a pair of tangent of a circle. See, again, this was not the part of the syllabus. This has been removed from the syllabus. So we are not doing this. Okay, next one. Prove that a parallelogram uh, circumscribing a circle is a rhombus. Okay, so we need to draw that first. He's saying there is a parallelogram that is circumscribing a circle. So let us have a <clears throat> parallelogram shape. Okay, this is a parallelogram shape. It is circumscribing a circle. Some circumscribing means the circle lies inside of the parallelogram. Okay, circle lies inside the parallelogram. Okay, this is a circle. Let me redraw this. Okay, let me draw the circle more carefully. Okay. Okay, this is the circle. So this is the parallelogram and the parallelogram is circumscribing a circle. Let me have the center O of the circle at the center. Let me name these sides. This is going to be A, B, C and D. These are the two sides. These are the four uh, vertices. Okay, A, B, C and D, the center is O and the point where the circle is touching the sides of the parallelogram are, let us name this as E, let us name this as F. So these are the nomenclature of all the uh, parallelogram and the circle. Now, let us bring down to the question, they are saying uh, A, B, C, D, okay. So we have A, B, C, D as a parallelogram. So we know that in a parallelogram, in a 
parallelogram opposite sides opposite sides are parallel and also equal okay this is the property of the parallelogram that the opposite sides are always parallel and equal so we'll use that by using that we can conclude that ab is equal to cd and also your ad is equal to cb or bc okay these two things can be concluded by the uh, property of the parallelogram now so we can write but there is a property of circle also that can be used see if you close look at this carefully the line ae and uh, okay this was ef this is g and h okay this these two names were left see, gh the lines ae and e ah are nothing but the tangents of the circle from the drawn uh, drawn from the point a similarly lines bh and bf are also the tangent of the circle drawn from the point b similarly the lines cg and c F are the tangent of the circle drawn from the point C and similarly D, E and D, G drawn from the point D. So we have one more property that a tangent from an external point of circle are equal in length. Let us write tangent drawn from external point, tangent drawn from external point to the circle, to the circles, to the circle are equal okay they are equal in length okay so that's why we can conclude our a e is equal to a h that is the tangent drawn from the point a similarly we can write b e is equal to b f tangent drawn from point b similarly we can write c g is equal to c f tangent drawn from point c and also d g is equal to d h okay now what we can do so let us write this as first equation this as second this as the third and this as the fourth equation. These are the fourth equation that we have written. Now, let us add these four equations. Okay, let us add these all four equations. Okay, add these all four equations. Now, what do we get? On the left hand side, there is AE plus BE plus CG plus DG is equal to on the right side AH plus BF plus CF plus dh okay these are the four things okay this is how we have added now if you look at it carefully ae and be ae plus be if you see it here ae plus be okay if you see it ae plus be is going to be uh, your ab ae plus be is going to be your ae plus be is going to be your eb this is e Okay, so what is that he's saying in this question? Prove that a parallelogram circumscribing a circle is a rhombus. So let us draw a parallelogram first. Okay, let us draw a parallelogram kind of a shape first. Okay, this something looks like a parallelogram. Okay, let me name the sides of the parallelogram A, B, C and D like that. And he's saying the parallelogram is circumscribing the circle. That means circle should fall inside the parallelogram. So let me draw a circle inside the parallelogram touching the uh, sides of the parallelogram on the sum of the edges so this is kind of a circle circle drawn okay this is kind of a circle drawn inside the parallelogram okay and the points where it is the where the circle is touching the circles uh, uh, touching the parallelogram uh, let me name them as e f g and h and here's the center in between o okay so this is a parallelogram figure circumscribing a uh, circle Okay, so what he's saying, prove that a parallelogram. So let us see the parallelogram pro property in a parallelogram. Okay, what is the parallelogram property in a parallelogram? The opposite sides, the opposite sides are equal and parallel. Okay, are equal and parallel. So equal part is important for us. So we can easily write AB is equal to the opposite side CD. And similarly, your uh, BC is equal to the opposite side AD. Okay, these are the two results that we get. Okay, now, now there is a circle also and the circle is being touched by the parallelogram on the other side. So we can see that there are tangents. See, there are tangents. The tangent AE and tangent AH. These are the two tangents drawn to the circle from the common point A. Similarly, tangent BF and tangent BE. These are the two tangents drawn from the common point B. Similarly, tangent GC and tangent your uh, 
C, F are drawn from the external point C. Similarly, tangent D, H and D, G are the tangent drawn from the external point D. So we have a theorem related to the tangent or drawn from the external point. What is that? Tangents drawn from an external point external point to the circle are equal okay so the all the tangent drawn that from the same point to the circle are also equal so this way we can write what all are equal so ae is equal to ah because the, these are the two tangent drawn from the common point a similarly be is equal to bf common uh, tangent drawn from the common point b similarly cf is equal to cg and dg is equal to dh these are the four things that we get let us name these equations as 1 2 3 and 4 Okay, these are the four equations drawn. Now let us add these four equations. Okay, add all equations. That is one, two, four. If we add them together, what do we get? AE plus BE plus CF plus DG. Okay, AE plus BE plus CF. AE plus BE plus CF plus DG. AE plus BE plus BF. Okay, A, A is equal to AH. B E is equal to B F C F is equal to C G and D G is equal to D H. This was the thing drawn. C G equal to C F. Okay, so if you add them, this is not C F equal to C G. Let me write C G to this. Okay, let us write this as C G. Okay, let us change the order of this. Instead of C F and C G, let me write that. Let me write this as C G is equal to C F. Okay, let me write this as C G is equal to C F. So this is C G and this is C F. Okay, the order doesn't make any uh, any changes. If you change the order on the equal to's left hand side and right hand side, that doesn't make any difference. So if we add now, it is AE plus BE plus CG plus DG. AE plus BE plus CG plus DD. On the right hand side, what do we get? AH plus BF plus CF plus DH. These are the four things that we get on the right hand side. Now, if you look at this carefully, AE plus BE is nothing but your AB. Okay. Similarly, if you look at CG plus DG, CG plus nothing, DG is nothing but CD. Similarly, AH plus DH. If you look at the last two, first and last, AH plus DH is nothing but AD. And similarly, the very inside BF plus CF is nothing but BC. Okay. So by adding and by pairing, we get this result. Now, as we know from the result obtained in the very first thing that AB is equal to CD and BC is equal to AD. So if we can use this, okay, AB is equal to CD. So in place of CD, I can write AB again. If I do this, this becomes AB plus AB is equal to, and similarly for in place of BC, AD can also be written. So it can be written AD plus AD, which gives me twice of AB is equal to twice of AD. So we can cut the two part. So ultimately it becomes AB is equal to AD. But we already know that AB is equal to CD. Okay, so we can keep on continuing and write equal to CD. And similarly, AD is equal to BC also. Okay, in this result, AD is equal to BC also. So I can continue and write BC also for this. So AB is equal to AD is equal to AD is equal to BC. That is nothing but all the sides have become equal. So if all the sides have become equal, so obviously it becomes a, this parallelogram has become a rhombus because rhombus has got all the sides of it as equal. Okay, so this parallelogram has 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 actually become the rhombus. Okay, when the it has it circumscribed the circle, the parallelogram has converted into the rhombus that was required to be proven. Whenever a parallelogram circumscribes a circle, it is a rhombus, and that's what has been proven. It is a rhombus with all the sides equal.